I've just been dropped off um, at the start of the Kalalau Trail in Kauai. Got the bow on the back, got enough gear and stuff for four days and super excited. 11 miles and about five hours to go. Hawaii is this very special place and I've been wanting to come here for many years so long day ahead of us on the trail. Keep you posted. Uh, this is the first stream crossing. Water level is not as high as uh, it could be which is great so crossing over to the other side. Nice, that was easy enough. Apparently crossing these streams can be pretty hairy when there's a heavy rain and they're flooding. First beach in, this is two miles and uh, it's sheer, check it out. Look at these, look at these cliffs and these mountains here. It's just incredible. And the trail itself is just so muddy and full of clay. It just makes me wonder about when uh, we get heavy rains how tough this is going to be to get out on because it's just so slippery. Good thing I got the tracking poles. Ah, this trail is getting pretty brutal. It's just so narrow. In fact, my boots, I have a hard time not scraping my legs with the opposite boot when I'm walking because the, tra the trail is that narrow. See the rooting around over here? This has all been disrupted. These are these pigs, and I can see their trails all around here. So there's definitely a lot of pig sign here. I just don't think I'm quite in goat country. I'm about four miles in, and I'm starting to run into some good sign. I've just seen a couple of Franklins, which are game birds, and then now I'm starting to see pigs and goat tracks. I don't know if you can see that right here. There's one part of the hoof, and here's the other. That's pretty, uh, it's pretty decent size. And I'm starting to see more and more of it, so. That's really good, I'm getting excited. Look at these pandanus, how the roots come out the bottom of the trunk and they splay out in a teepee formation and then they go into the ground there. They've got these really cool um, long leaves that have these little thorns that line the edges of the leaves which are pretty tricky to walk through but they just symbolize the, uh, the tropics for me. It's a lime tree. Lime or Lemon, look at that. Oh, that's good, sour. It actually looks like um, like some um, little tangerines or something. And then this is guava. Man, I have not eaten guava since I was a kid. We used to climb the guava trees back in, in South Africa and then pull all the fruits off and eat them and they were pink on the inside. Let's see what this one looks like. Mmm, smells amazing. You can see all the pink uh, flesh on the inside with a lot of seeds. Mmm, amazing. Look at that, sheer drop. It's pretty hairy. It's about Five or six goats right there. The one goat's up in a tree or was he on a rock? It's a good sign. It's just too early to shoot any. I'm here for four days. I'm here for four days and I gotta pack out the meat. I want to kind of do it on towards the end of the trip so I'm going to do some intel on to how where these animals are moving <clears throat> and then probably look at starting to hunt them tomorrow Wow, this is incredible. You can see all these little rock walls that have been put up here by man. Probably uh, for farming purposes would be my guess. 
Yeah, look at that, it's like terraced. I've always had this deep fascination with the, with the ancient peoples of our planet. And this is uh, really something cool to see, wonder about the history. Perfect place to live long term. There's just so many resources. This is one of those places that just makes you feel so small and insignificant. The size of the mountains and just the way that they've formed, it just is uh, unlike anything I've ever seen. I think these are all tamarind trees. There's a thick grove of them and the bark has been eaten by these goats. They just love it for some reason. Like every single tree trunk here has been stripped of bark. Take a mental note of that because bound to be some goats in here if I come back to this area. All right, look at this. We have found a campsite and we're in the valley. <clears throat> Cleared out area. This old fire pit that someone's used before. And uh, couple of good trees to string the top and the hammock and we've got a stream right here for water this is perfect 11 miles today it took me eight hours that was a long hike but it was totally worth it um, got such a great campsite fortunately as you can hear there's helicopters in the area uh, I guess sightseeing in the valley but uh, what a what an amazing hike all right so i'm going to set up camp This is where trekking poles come in handy with just doing top shelters. Just to be able to prop the roof up, give me more room under that top so that I can move under there and give me more cover when it rains because it does tend to rain a lot here. I'm going to pump some water, fill up my hydration bladder and my bottle and, uh, and then we're going to jump in for a swim. So beautiful. I have a private pool right here by the campsite. The ancient Hawaiians used to live here. There's just such a presence to this place. You can just feel energetically that this used to harbor a lot of life. I mean, it's such a resourceful area that makes total sense that people would call this home such a long tiring hike today i'm really excited for tomorrow to get out and explore this valley just such beauty and i have it all to myself this is just unreal i mean look at this place pools and there's fruit trees growing around there's plenty of goats i think this is the garden of eden all right, I'm starving, so it's time to eat. I have some noodles and some freeze-dried ground beef and beans. This right here is a solo stove. So what you do is you chuck a whole bunch of twigs inside here, light them up, and you basically build up an ember bed. Chuck this guy on top, and then you'll put your uh, pot on top of here. Now, I've never used this thing before, so <laughs> I'm interested to see how hot this thing burns and how many uh, sticks it's gonna take to, to build up some heat. So I've got a very small uh, cotton ball, piece of cotton ball and Vaseline. We'll get that lit. And then we'll just sprinkle some twigs on top of that. I like the fact that I get to use natural materials instead of bringing gas with. It's much lighter and it's just very, uh, very self-sufficient.
so far I'm impressed I like it um, we'll see how quickly though that it boils the water So that works excellent. Hardwood would definitely be better so that it burns longer, but it really doesn't make too much of a difference. The softwood here brought this to a boil within, I'd say, five minutes, and uh, doesn't need to boil too long. So I'm really impressed, works great. I hiked up above where I'm camped for the night and the view is captivating. This has got to be one of the most incredible places. I'm just sitting by the fire and I am about to crash and get some sleep and then get up tomorrow bright and early, make some breakfast and then go find us a goat. morning well that was an interesting night I'm pretty susceptible to energy and uh, there's definitely what I perceive to be some sort of an ancestral energy in this area um, I, you know when you kind of feel like you're walking through the woods and something staring at you like <laughs> that was the kind of feeling I had all night um, I also uh, heard a noise behind the hammock and turned the headlamp on and looked out and there was a black animal staring at me, pitch black, probably about the size of a raccoon. Um, pretty certain they don't get raccoons here. I know they do get um, a mongoose species that's, that's here, but those are like, th this must have been four or five times bigger than a mongoose. So yeah, I'm not sure what it was. Time to get some breakfast going and then we're going to get out and chase some goats. Oatmeal for breakfast. I'm not crazy about oatmeal, but it's uh, very light to carry and it's pretty filling and gives you quite a bit of energy. But I'm looking forward to getting some fresh meat today. Nah. Headed up into the valley. I think is a type of plum. got like a sour bitter but very pleasant taste to it actually purple on the inside mm, pretty astringent but they're pretty good they grow everywhere here all right well let's carry on feral goats just like other feral animals here in Hawaii have no natural predators they overpopulate and they cause a lot of destruction in the ecosystem. Hawaii is really trying to keep these populations under control, but some of these locations like this one are just so inaccessible. Hunting feral animals that are invasive to an area is definitely a, a very ethical way to hunt because without the hunting, it's gonna be really hard to keep a healthy carrying capacity in these areas. Oh, spotted a goat. It's a black and white goat, literally right up there. I'm not sure how easy this stuff is to penetrate, but if I just follow this ridge, I could make it up to it. Those goats were not having it. They saw me and took off. Surprising. <laughs> but now I see them on the opposite ridge. Probably too small for you guys to see, but they're up on that ridge. They just dropped right into the bottom of that creek bed and right up on the other side in no time at all. So I'm watching which direction they're going and it's back down towards the water. So I'm gonna head in that direction and see if I can intercept them. 
I came around to the area where I, th where I saw the goats up on the ridge and thought they would come down and I can hear them walking down right now. It was a good shot. <clears throat> it was a pass through, a complete pass through. See it's bloody from all the way through. And he's up there so I've got to try and get after him. He just fell down over there, right there. Yeah, he's, he's going to be dead soon. Well, that was a perfect ambush. Those goats that I saw up on the ridge, I predicted where they were going to come down and sure enough, they just came right to me. I chose the biggest billy. I managed to get a second shot in him and I think that was a hot shot. So he, he dropped uh, 10 yards from where I shot him the second time. I only had to track him down about 40 yards. <clears throat> Not a huge goat but decent all right the flies are starting to gather so i definitely want to be um, getting this done quickly and i'm going to do the gutless method so goats have very very big digestive system they can process a lot of different plant foods into energy so with that comes a big gut and i don't want to i don't want to rupture that these are pretty small goats pretty lean out here so i'm not expecting a lot of meat but i'm actually pretty interested to see just how much we get out of this animal Beautiful, nice front leg, and we're gonna chuck everything in this game bag right here because there's gonna be a lot of flies in this area. The world's tiniest backstrap. <laughs> We're in the tropics the meat spoiling is a real real concern because of the heat and the humidity and then also we have the challenge of all these flies so bones will overheat the meat quick so you definitely want to get the bones out of that meat all right i've got all the meat off this uh, goat and now i'm going to make my way back down to that stream where I can uh, debone this and then we'll have to go and work on a smoker. See how cool this is? This pack folds out like that so I can stuff my meat in, in between. That is not a ton of meat, that's for sure. All right, let's head out of here. All right, I'm back at camp and I've got my meat hanging out there. So now I need to build a smoking rack. Out here I don't have ice and it's not cool enough in order just to air dry it. Um, I also have a lot of flies to contend with. So smoking is the best option to preserve this meat. So before I go any further, I am starving and I'm craving some meat. <laughs> So I'm going to start roasting a few pieces of the, of the goat that I can eat for lunch and I'm just going to season it with some salt and then I'll continue building my smoker. So I'm roasting this piece of meat and then I've got two legs right here that I'm ash cooking. So when you find that the coal bed turns white with that white colored ash, that's when it's ready to, to ash cook. It's an ancient method of cooking, probably the oldest known to human beings.
the smoking racks done and uh, what I want is I want the smoke and a little bit of the heat to be coming up to this area here but I don't want it to be too hot to where I can't put my hand there all right so there we've got our, our meat rack and the fire below it I've actually dropped the whole thing just a little bit because uh, the wind direction is a problem it keeps blowing the smoke away so I'm tr trying to use some of the greenery here to block the wind and funnel that smoke right up through the meat which now it's working probably looking at about four hours to get that dry crust on the outside to stop the flies from landing once that's done I can hang it up and just sun dry it but I need to get that crust otherwise those flies get in there and lay eggs let's take a look at this Nice little piece of... Mm. Chewy, but tasty. For those of you that have never tried goat meat, I highly recommend it. It can be chewy, and of course out here in the bush it will be. But if you slow cook it, it is really good and very comparable to beef. Okay, I've just turned all of these pieces and as you can see here it's getting a nice crust and that's what's really important to get rid of all that moisture it's really crisping up good everything's looking perfect so I came to check out the beach and uh, just was very interested I never got to make it yesterday and uh, look at this view It's just incredible. God, it just never gets old. Look at how incredible that is. So this tree here produces a fruit, and I forget the name of it, but oh, here's one here, and apparently you're supposed to let the fruit just sit and soften up, and then uh, it can be eaten. However, it smells like Ooh, like something I don't want to eat. This is an almond tree. You can see all of the almonds in the ground. They're grown like this husk, and then the nut is actually on the inside. Check this waterfall out. It falls down right by the beach. Drains down here, and there's bananas. Check it out. It looks like it's an orange tree. It's a pretty tall one. This one here also has some fruit on it. Right up there. Probably hard to see with the camera, but I really want one. I wonder if there's I wonder if there's one that's landed underneath the tree here somewhere that's maybe fallen off. There we go feels like an orange. The skin, yeah, this, this is an orange. Mm. <laughs> as organic as it gets. Mm. Eating fresh goat meat and wild oranges and other fruits. Man, this is my type of day. It makes me feel great. Um, this place is just so abundant so pristine and beautiful it's amazing so i just took a little walk around the beach but i'm gonna head back to camp now i need to check on the smoker and just uh probably add some wood to the fire okay so he here's the update on the meat <clears throat> there's a piece right there you can see it's uh very dry not dry to where you it's crunchy and you can break it but it's dry enough to where all that moisture is pretty much out of the surface of that meat. There's still some soft pieces on the thicker chunks, but um, overall that's what I was going for to keep the flies off, so very happy with that. And uh, I've got about a pound and a half of meat that is, has not been smoked, and that's, I'm gonna eat that for uh, dinner tonight and then tomorrow. 
It's been about six hours that the meat has smoked today and I've transferred it into the game bag. What I did is cut the game bag in half. So this has still got the, uh, the fresh meat from today and then this is all the dehydrated stuff and I've sealed off both ends and I'll just hang both of them up so that the cool air that comes down this canyon at night will just dry it out. So we've got some goat with some noodles. I've eaten a lot of goat in Africa and I really enjoy it. This goat is so good because it probably just eats <laughs> the most amazing fruits all day. Well, I'm going to eat up some dinner and then get a good night's sleep and tomorrow we're going to go do some exploring. I just went to wash my hands down in the creek and there's some big crawfish in here. Normally I would take crawfish in a heartbeat because they're delicious but I got plenty of meat but let me show you them. They actually might be like a freshwater shrimp or prawn. Their pincers are really small and they do have some slightly different features to the crawfish. They're probably feeding on the goat scraps that I threw in the water. And I'm glad I did because it doesn't go to waste. Ugh, good morning. That was a much better night's sleep. Get some, uh, make some tea and then look at heading out and exploring this valley. So I'm just hiking up into this valley and these stone walls are just everywhere. I mean, there was a whole civilization here. I mean, look at them. I mean, everywhere you go, they're just lining everything. Like terraces that they were farming on. But to move this much rock, I mean, there was a substantial community here. Every single tree that you see growing here are all producing some sort of a fruit. Most of them, I notice, are these. I call them a, like a like a wild plum because I don't actually know what they are. Just the, the scale of how many people would have been surviving in this small valley is so intriguing to me. I mean, they've got everything. They've got plenty of wild fruits growing. They would have brought goats or pigs over, and that's probably why they're in this area. <clears throat> they've got the ocean. And they've got beautiful clean fresh water that flows through here so this is wild ginger pretty sure about that and then over here we have <clears throat> some banana trees a couple of little bananas on this one right here and then coconut trees i'm under a mango tree check it out man unfortunately it's just uh it's not ripe that is a bummer. I got to find a ripe mango. I love mangoes. So this is taro. The local Hawaiians use the root to make a, a dish called poi, which is like a superfood. Very, very uh, filling and nutritious. And I'm not sure how that process goes, but I know that this is the plant. Well, this morning's hike has just been jaw dropping. Like you think of a Garden of Eden and this is what you think of where every tree that's growing in the area is for medicinal food it's incredible i uh, never seen anything like it in the wild like this and uh, so i'm a couple miles up into the valley and uh, i'm gonna head back time to break down camp and we're gonna head out of the valley and we're gonna head halfway back to the start of the trailhead it's about five miles and that's where we're gonna spend the night so I'm gonna get everything packed up and get on the road Well, let's go climb up that. What do you guys say? Got to be done. And that is where we will be camping tonight. Got camp set up here. Pretty cool spot. 
because um, right over here there's a creek and apparently there's a waterfall up there well it's 4 30 a.m and as you can hear it is pissing down rain and uh, I've had to strategically rearrange a bunch of things it's just coming off the edge of the top and then it's uh, draining down right underneath me so with all my clothes and stuff shoved into my hammock with my uh, with my uh, goat meat my bow is propped up on a water bottle there's my cooking pot <laughs> hopefully we can just stay dry enough here until uh, we get to daylight otherwise I might be packing up early <laughs> yeah, there were a dull moment in the tropics <sighs> so finally the rain has stopped it's about 6 30 in the morning and it's starting to get light which is great everything of mine is wet that I have to deal with right now and get it all packed up and get ready for the long five to six hour hike out so uh, I'm just gonna get everything pulled down and get packed up and when the, when it gets light enough I'll get out on the road oh this is incredible look at this it drains into this perfect beautiful pool right here it's like <laughs> movie stuff now that was worth the hike my last morning here in Hawaii and that's a nice way to finish it off I have got to get on this trail and get out of here to get to the airport about six hours of hiking or so and uh, got to take it slow and steady it's gonna be slick all right the first river crossing it's not too bad I'll make it but I might have to get wet all right, I'm just going to jump over this one, that one, that one, and then I'm home free. Two thirds of the way done. We're at this beach over here. And then this is the final stream crossing right here, which is a pretty substantial one. So that river is raging. I had to go all the way down to the beach and walk up the side and go through where the river goes onto the beach. It's uh, much shallower. so much safer so that's the final river crossing final one home stretch two miles to go okay and that is it finished five hours what an amazing amazing experience if you've watched the whole thing well thanks for coming along on the ride really appreciate it and uh, now i've got to try and get a shuttle all the way to the airport the next adventure